All right, welcome to the CES meeting. It's September 20th. We have Jordan to talk with us about Get Intrinsic. Uh, so essentially the only open question on the proposal is, does it include all intrinsics or just hidden intrinsics? And given that the shape of the API is going to be basically the same, uh, regardless of that choice, I'm going to basically just ask plenary, like, can this be stage two with one of those two options? Uh, and then obviously answering that question would be a stage two, you know, would need to be solved before trying to go to stage three. Um, just because if, if that's the only holdout, like that feels like um, something that can be decided in stage two. That was where I'm at. As I feel like if it, with either case, it solves the SES concern uh, because hidden intrinsics are innumerable and it doesn't, solve my motivation completely, but it, you know, uh, it's still an improvement, I think. And I still, I, I definitely will continue arguing for having it be all intrinsics, but uh, yeah, I just kind of think it, it thought it made sense to not have this languish at stage one uh, solely because of that one question. I don't know if y'all have thoughts that differ from that or, or if there's something I forgot about because I, didn't like research the repo before hopping in today. <laughs> Remind me what our position is. Our position is that it's fine for all intrinsics to be present, but right? I Yes, I think it's all stronger than that is like we're hidden intrinsics are sufficient for us. Uh, they're possibly easier. If all intrinsics are present, we also need some kind of way to uh, then there is the question of whether it's only JavaScript intrinsics or in, or including host intrinsics. In which case, how do we differentiate uh, JavaScript intrinsics from host intrinsics? And our and our previous consensus on that was that it would be great. It would be sufficient for the spec to be clear is that the global object served as a delimiter between those two ranges, like everything above the global and the right. enumeration order would be the, JavaScript. Yeah, the way it's currently specified in the proposal is it's all of the 262 intrinsics, the global object, and then a host hook. And I would presumably keep that same pattern regardless of whether it was all the host, the, the 262s or just the hidden 262s. Um, yeah. Well, right. At, at which point you have to somewhat rely on uh, order, uh, because mm -hmm. the global wouldn't be present in the uh, hidden only intrinsics. But that's, that's fine. The global object is not a hidden, so it wouldn't show up. That's true. I guess in the hidden case, we don't know what would the, the delimiter be. You would have to rely on order. The order would be deterministic, like for the two six two ones. I don't remember if I made it deterministic for the host hook. Um, but yeah, in that case, you'd have to like guess which the last one was, which isn't super well, ideal. Well, no, you don't have to guess. It's just you run to the end or until you hit the global object, whichever comes first. No, you run until you backtrack uh, in order. Well, no, but in the, in the case where it's just the hidden intrinsics, the global is not a hidden intrinsic, so it wouldn't be in the list. Right. So you, you so go it can't through serve as a delimiter. So you go through the list and they're all ordered. Uh, and as soon as you find an entry that is less than, this is the delimitation. I'm not following what you're saying at all. Like the list would go like A to Z and then A to Z. And so as soon as you find the first oh, thing oh, that's, oh, 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 and that, oh, that's so, like a, so, a so we're, weird we're heuristic. So we're talking about hidden JavaScript intrinsics and then hidden host intrinsics being yes. present, gotcha. Gotcha. I was, I was somehow I had, I had gotten the, 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 I had developed the concept that, that, that hidden intrinsics were just JavaScript intrinsics and that's wrong. Right. It's I possible. mean, there's also 402, there's also 402 ones that need to get patched into the list, but they would be sorted in the same list as the 262 ones is my intention. Right. They're part of JavaScript. Right. Okay. That's, that, that's, that's clear. Yeah. Cool. I don't, I'm trying to find which issue discussed using the global as like a delimiter. I think we didn't create an issue. It was more of a uh, understanding of what would happen. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll, I'll make a comment on that open question, but but either way, like the the shape of the API is is the same, right? It's still a like a function that gives you an iterator, you know, and like I can pull up exactly what my uh, currently proposed shape is. Like I said, I don't have this all paged in, but the API shape doesn't change based on what the contents of it are uh, with these two quest, you know, two paths. Um, Looks like issue eleven. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure that this might not be useful, but I'm not sure that for the purposes of CES we actually care. No, 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 no. We do need the delimiter. So the, the so like there were. I mean, the delimiter could be null. Right, like, like I could. We can always put a delimiter in there, right? It's it's a string or null, and null is the delimiter, right? Like, I I agree that there should be an explicit delimiter, and we shouldn't just be hoping that the order works out, right? Like, um, it's just really nice to have the global as the delimiter, but well, it it would be. I think it, from our perspective, it would be equally satisfying if we start with just the hidden 262 intrinsics and not have a host hook and then later add um no that's a problem if uh if there are hidden intrinsics that are reachable through 262 if there are hosted intrinsics that are reachable through 262 um those, those extensions Yes, the, but the the trick there is that if our if our behavior in CES is to harden everything until the global, then there are host specific intrinsics that need to be above the delimiter. Like for 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 that for that argument to be to 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 hold weight, there has to be a host hidden intrins a host specified hidden intrinsic that is undeniable from JavaScript because like all of the 402 things, presumably you have to have a handle on Intel inside of the, cool. uh, inside of a compartment in order to get to any of those hidden intrinsics. So we, by default, you're saying Cess will like lock away or, or deny or whatever, all the globals that the web provides. It, it does the compartment. Okay, then yeah, the compartment only Compartments only provide 262 shared, specifically the subset of shared intrinsics oh, okay. uh, in a compartment. And then apart from that, there are some intrinsics that are undeniable because of syntax, like the, the async function constructor um, that have to be hard. Yeah. So the in that case, I think currently there are no host hidden intrinsics you guys care about. However, the import some of the import proposals that allow you to get like wasm.memory objects and stuff through syntax would in fact start to qualify yes. so so I, I think we have to still design for that possibility even though the list is currently empty yes mm -hmm. yes there would have to be separate host hooks for things that should go above global and things that should go below and then we have to communicate <laughs> somehow. Well, Boy, the, the purpose of the global delimiter was to say, this is where 262 stops and the web begins. It wasn't to say, just go to scalable and stop with your hardening. You'd still want to go through everything. It would just be categorizing them. We don't go through everything. We do not, for, uh, hard, the lockdown, CES's lockdown deliberately does not, mm -hmm. does not harden things that are not shared. So the global delimiter is starting to sound like a less useful well, distinction. What are the ones you're thinking of, Chris? That um, that would be that that aren't part of ECMAScript, but still. Well, it's it's actually even more sinister than that. There are hidden. There are intrinsics. Never mind hidden intrinsics in two six two that we don't care to harden. Right, we don't care, but like because we're not sharing them with a the guest compartment, mm -hmm. for example, don't have any need to harden the Intel API, 
for example. Yeah, but that's always going to be an enumeration in SES, let's say. Like so, these, uh, these are the intrinsics that we know about and are going to uh, skip hardening. So the, the so the so the behavior of lockdown over the evolution of the language will be that by default any any intrinsic introduced above the global line i don't know of any other line would be implicitly hardened regardless of whether it ought to be um until we get around to relaxing that constraint in a future version of the of the ses shim or hardened javascript in general is well, that we, we could take uh, different approaches. Certainly, we're going to apply uniform treatment to anything after global that we don't know about. Um, and that treatment could be to harden, or it could be to leave it alone, and it's not shared anyway. Yeah. But wouldn't you want to treat all the things above the global too? Like, like in other words, you want to if a new hidden intrinsic appears, or if a new non-hidden intrinsic appears that you don't already know about, you still would want to get to those. We like well, let, let's talk about something concrete, um, okay. like uh, the iterator helper proposal uh, introduces new hidden intrinsics. Yeah, that are reachable via the use of exist for of APIs that are currently already shared with SES compartments, right? You can you can get access is so by by constructing an iterator using syntax, you now have an object that has a prototype with methods on it. Mm -hmm. And those methods, some of those new methods return objects that close over new Yeah, iterator helper prototype becomes accessible. Yeah. Through a few exactly. hops. Yeah. That's um that's not actually the best case. The case the like the um, um, the one of the interesting cases is when we introduced now something like this, but not exactly this. The map, um, the uh, suppose that we're we're in a time where map exists in the language, but maps are not yet iterable, and then and and then a proposal lands that makes the that makes maps iterable, and the map iterator prototype is a hidden intrinsic that was not previously frozen by Cess because it didn't know it existed. So what we want for the purposes of Cess is to have some region, to have some API where if the host adds an intrinsic like the map iterator prototype, that Cess could find that and harden it by default. Um, right, but wouldn't if if the the web also suddenly adds a some new thing, maybe they they add a method to iterator prototype that then produces a DOM element iterator prototype thing. Yes, you'd still want to get to that too. So the position above or below the lines are relevant. Like you still want to be able to get to all the objects. The yes. purpose of the line is just to let you know if you care about. You know, like, as you said, you only provide ho like language objects to compartments. So if it's above the line, then you provide it to the, the compartments. And if it's below the line, you still want to lock yeah. it down, but you still may not want to inject it or anything like that. Yeah, I, right? I, I, I think that's right. Because because the, the whole purpose of this proposal is to give you a means to defend yourself against future changes to the language which weren't anticipated at the time you wrote your shim or whatever. Yeah. And, and there's sort of two different categories. There's one are what are all the things we want to we might possibly want to lock down, um, or to, excuse me, things we might want to harden, um, which could be anything. And so by the base cases, it's it's all of those things. Um, and then there will, might be exceptions to that, but those are going to be enumerated exceptions, which are going to be you know decided in some kind of you know design discussion, um, um, and individually chosen as yeah no okay this one's okay and it they that's that that whole thing is irrelevant whether it's whether it's host provided or language provided is irrelevant well yeah so uh 
An easy example of an object that says must not harden is the global object. Apropos, uh, we have Gal on the call, um, and Gal's from MetaMask, and one of the things that they do is scuttle their global environment after they've moved all of the useful powers into a compartment. Um, as a uh, as an um, as a, as another layer of defense in the case that confinement fails and somebody gets access to the global object, the real global object. Um, after scuttling, they get to the global object and there's nothing there that's of any use. <laughs> and um, the the reason this is possible is because we specifically do not harden certain objects, specifically the global object in the global context, so that they can be erased, <laughs> essentially. Um, the but global is really, I, I guess global is the only example of that, and we're not expecting any others to exist in the language going forward. But to wit, there are thousands of properties on the global object in a web host environment that we do not currently harden, that would be expensive to harden, and might even fail <laughs> to, to harden, because they're all host, some of them are host exotic objects with behaviors that, that do not play well with freeze. Um, uh, like if there happened, if someone, if there happened to be a non-configurable object, a non-configurable property anywhere in the new, newly added intrinsics, harden would throw an exception. <laughs> we we don't want to attempt to harden just about any, just just anything as it comes in. Um, I mean, unless unless there's agreement that we that all host properties are configurable in the base case, which is the norm. Yeah. So the, the interesting case, if um, if everything beyond 262 is reachable from the global, then there's no issue because the existing mechanisms already cover it and uh, nothing that we know about would be shared and, and nothing, nothing that we don't know about would be shared anyway. The concern is that there might be hidden ah. intrinsics beyond 262. So this mechanism would be the way to discover those. And I guess it it wouldn't matter if they are beyond 262 or not. Uh, any hidden intrinsic that we don't already know about because it's new, uh, we, would, we would definitely try to harden and we would probably fail with an error if that doesn't work, which which also even that isn't necessarily sufficient because if it's a function that returns things that are mutable, like then that's going to be an escape. But well, things that are shared and mutable. Um, so, so here's a position, uh, Jordan. You do want to have all intrinsics enumerable at some point. Yeah, my like almost entire motivating use case is to replace my get intrinsics library. Yeah, which requires all intrinsics. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to continue to argue very strongly for that. Uh, you know, but I, you know, you can't really argue if an implementer says we we can't make it because it's too memory intensive, um, unless you're willing to dive into their code base and do it. So, I, I I think I think the sort of the meta concept here is rather than maintaining this this list by hand and yeah. hoping that you can keep up with the the implementers. Telling implementers, yep. look, when you add something, tell the world. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it means that my like my library would continue to be useful even after I get hit by a bus instead of going out of date at with every TC39 meeting. <laughs> yeah. For example. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so that 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 puts us in a strange position because the I think that, and it's a shame that Markham's not here um, because he can check my work on this, but my impression is that we do, we do not want the Cess shim to have a list of, uh, of all of the objects that are okay not to harden that are provided <laughs> by any host. Um, we don't want that. Well, but no, I mean, if it has all intrinsics can... and there's a delimiter, but, uh, then but, you don't have to walk the graph, right? You just go to the yeah. delimiter and stop? 
that would that would be great if we could rely on the delimiter to be meaningful for the purposes of cess um the, I mean, so, so do you need to like the delimiter answer is is it language versus host uh yeah. is the question is that the question you need or is the question you need is it hidden versus not uh it is I mean, it's, <laughs> um what's what's our logic for for what gets shared like is that is that an enumeration shared is yeah the shared is ex, is an express explicitly mentioned permits and mm -hmm. like the the graph of what is shared with with compartments is um it's pretty but the, the 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 problem is that the shared intrinsics include a subset of 262 objects um not all and also some some additions that we contrive but they have to capture all reachable hidden intrinsics including an, and undeniable intrinsics that are um that are reachable from our particular subset <laughs> through api usage and that is such that is that is such a very specific predicate that i think mark was trying to reach for something that is more easily communicated to implementers right right and, and i think that's so and and the key to unlocking that is the assumption that any hidden intrinsic is reachable from code inside a compartment. Yes. If it's hidden, then we we cannot assume that it is deniable. Right. So so we also can't is, assume it's reachable. Well, no, we we have to assume it's reachable. But I mean you can't know it's reachable. Yeah, I guess yes. you have to yeah, yeah, you I don't know it's question. reachable. And you also don't know. Um yeah, you don't know whether it's reachable. Um right. and so, having so it on the global way. object isn't even sufficient to that end because we don't enumerate all properties on the global object. We do enumerate all of the properties on shared intrinsics, like the array constructor, etc. So all it tends to be the case that all interesting language features happen to be properties of existing shared intrinsics, but it is possible for some things like uh, I was apropos of module harmony, there are as as Jordan mentioned, there are new prototype new hidden prototypes like the abstract module source coming into the language. And there's a bit of a delicate dance to ensure that Sess can discover them before they're revealed by revealed by syntax. Well, that's that's where this comes in. So without get intrinsics, the the roots of the graph are any clever thing that we know about, uh, such as the syntax that exposes the, the iterator prototype, and also the global object. So the introduction of new hidden things is a problem. This proposal is the mechanism by which we get all the roots, even the ones that are hidden. And we don't actually care if it includes things that are reachable from those roots, because the roots themselves are enough to do a graph traversal. So having that, um, we further know that uh, anything hidden, we must assume is reachable uh, and we, we must assume is not deniable. So that's, that's the starting point. So like, it, in the context of this proposal, we we have the roots of reachability, including the hidden ones. And then what SES does with that is up to SES. Um, and, and the answer, I think, is that um, the, the permits defines reachability with respect to those roots. Um, what, what we're going to sh um, share ability um, with respect to those roots. We're going to know that the um 
the, the array constructor, for instance, is shared. And we're also going to know that the iter iterator prototype is shared. Um, array by permit, iterator prototype, because we cannot deny it. And so you start with the, the roots of the, uh, of the object graph. You traverse that object graph to get a complete picture of it. We identify what's going to be shared, either because uh, of an explicit decision or because it's not deniable. And then we harden from that point. So uh, allow me to, to attempt to rephrase what you're saying. So if, if the enumeration of all intrinsics has, or if we use the global this as the delimiter among the intrinsics between hidden versus hidden versus non-hidden, that's a more useful predicate than host provided than language provided, because hidden, um, because only. This this is the this is the this is the the premise that might not be true. Only hidden intrinsics could be undeniable. Yeah, but I think that we would identify hidden by a different mechanism than position. <clears throat> There's so definitely we, a lot of choices. So like the, the current way that it's like specified is you get an iterator, an iterator for entries where the key is a string that describes it um, like symbol dot, whatever, array dot prototype dot map and so on. And the, uh, and that's actually, no, it's just an iterator for, for that, for the strings. And then the, that's for the get intrinsics plural. And then the singular one, you, you can dot map and pass each one into get intrinsic if you want to reify it. Um, there's a lot of things we could do there instead of strings it could be an object that says hidden true or i don't know like that's fine too because that's also a trivial map into string and intrinsic if that's what you want um like i i don't i i think that the the implementer concerns are about memory and reachability and beyond that i don't think they care too much uh mm. determining what's hidden will probably end up being hand wavy pros in the spec and a hard coded list in implementations, which is fine, like annoying, but fine. And to um, be hidden yeah. means what, how, how do we communicate the meaning of I, I would probably, I, I mean, I'd have to noodle on it and come up with some wording, but like the way I, I am hearing it, what it means is if it is reachable through a global property at the beginning of a realm. Yeah. By right, property. like if you by property navigation only, which is the way the intrinsics notation already works. Like, in other words, if the first identifier in a dotted intrinsic string is a, also a property on the global list, then it's not hidden. Sure. Yeah. And, and like th that's a way that we could. I mean, that's that's if, like if we can the heuristic insist on the string format, it. then we can parse the strings to discover, you know, to, to yeah, that's uh, fine. That's also fine. So, That's but actually I think, more attractive because it makes the proposal less complicated. Right. That's true. But we do have to, yeah. we would need to document the language invariant. <laughs> the, yeah. The, well, I think yeah. I'm trying to page it back in. Like, why did we care about 262 versus not? Um, it is certainly the case that we would want to fail if there is a hidden intrinsic beyond 262 that we don't know about. But I'm trying to think, is it also the case that we would want to fail if there is a hidden intrinsic in 262 that we don't know about? And the answer to that question, I think, is interesting because if the if there can be an invariant of the spec that the hidden intrinsics defined in the spec are tameable by Harden, um, however we phrase it, then we would be willing to allow 
hidden intrinsics, even if we don't know about them, um, that are in 262. And I think that's what we were trying to get at, that the 262 spec can, can impose constraints on the hidden intrinsics that would make them uh, safe for us to pass through uh, after hardening the object graph and trained by them. Um, but that is not the case for anything outside of 262. Right. And that's, if I remember correctly, why we actually cared, why we wanted that um, that boundary to be clearly discoverable in the enumeration of intrinsics. And then anything beyond 262 that is reachable, we already have covered and we don't care about it in hidden intrinsic in get intrinsics. Um, because it just doesn't matter. We can discover Intel, we can discover um, alert, we can discover you set time out, like all those things are already discoverable by object graph traversal. Yeah, um, though, though it's interesting, I don't think that we actually traverse starting at global. I think we start at the no, uh, the known shared intrinsics. Uh, I might be wrong on that though. No, I, I think I think we do start at global. Um, but if not, that would be like, that's a fix for us to make. It's basically the same logic that already exists with a special case saying the global itself isn't going to get hardened, but it is going to be a route for traversal. Right. Um, okay. So, um, but I think that's why we care. We, we need to know in the enumeration of intrinsics, we definitely need all the routes to show up. We need to know for each route whether it is reachable or not and we also need to know for those that are not reachable but probably just for all of them whether we consider hardening to be sufficient for uh for sharing with compartments and i think that we can put into 262 uh logic that says the answer will be yes but we definitely can't for anything else that hosts might want to add and so that's well, what and we I I don't imagine that it would fly to put the logic of those three questions. The third one, I don't think that can be encoded in the spec. Like I don't. But, but we can infer it. Like we can put, we can define the spec in such a way that it is knowable. If if analysis of the, if we have that demarcation point, so that we know what's in two six two and what's not. Yeah. Um, then anything that's not, we just need to know: is it hidden? And that we can determine by the, the contents of the uh, values returned by the enumeration. Okay. Either through analyzing the string or through looking for an object property or whatever so, it is. Right. So we have two we have two predicates that we think are reasonable to ask of 262 to maintain as an invariant of the language. One of which is, is this provided by the language or provided by the host? And we use the global this as a delimiter. Mm -hmm. And then is it hidden or is it not? Which we can infer from the string name. Yeah, you parse it out and yeah. 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 Basically the first dot or left bracket, everything to the left of it. That and if we that's, and if the, we that's either a global or not. To, like yeah. that second thing, I, I really want to put that in, like so we can get it from the, the contents of the string. But if we don't, it still might be okay because we can use whether we discovered it by object traversal. But I mean, I think the intention is you wouldn't need to do any object traversal based on like you like with if, if we included all all intrinsics, you don't need to do any object traversal. You just go through the list and do everything. And but you you get to determine like yeah. is you parse out of the string and then you say, is that on the global? If so, right, then yes. then it's right. And um the, and it's awesome if we can get there. Like and, and we want yeah, to yeah. I mean I, I think oh, it's it's yeah. The thing that makes the proposal more complex is if you want the hiddenness pre-computed and and like direct like like as in instead of a string you get an object with a name and oh, no, 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 hidden yeah. true. Like, if, if you don't care about if that, we can encode, then... if we can encode the structure of the string in, in a way that is binding on uh, yeah, all of it, its it's already content. it's already specified that way. You can do that right now as is. Um, the only the only thing that isn't that needs to be like, and that's just like intrin that's <laughs> inherent in the way the intrinsic notation is defined. Yes. Right. Is that the intrinsic notation? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The 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 only thing that can work in the intrinsic notation that won't be a global, that won't have a global root, is if the root is an intrinsic that's not on the global, and that's something you can trivially determine. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, so the, like, and having a delimiter, like it's, I think it's really true. It, it will be really easy to have a delimiter, whether it's hidden intrinsics or all intrinsics. It's just the global is a really convenient way to kind of sneak that information in there yep. as a delimiter for all, but we don't even have to do that. We could use null as a delimiter in both cases or something, right? It just, just anything Maybe. that's not a string could be a delimiter in both cases if you wanted to be really explicit about it. But like, you know, I, I think yeah. that, I, I just don't, I don't think that that's a major API design question. I think that can be dissolved, like that could be decided I, like three seconds before we go to stage three and it would be fine. <laughs> so that's sort yeah, of why I, I was thinking I think so maybe too. it's time to, to like punt this question till stage two. Yeah. Yeah, what it, what it clarified for us is that the, the questions that must be answerable of 262 versus not, hidden versus not, and uh, the details of how we get to those answers aren't, I think, super important. Cool. Does that does that make sense to the other Agoric folks that like that's what we actually need? Yeah, provide, provided that there is a language invariant that's preserved, that language yeah. invariants are preserved to make it so that those questions continue to be reliably answerable. Yeah. I, I am highly invested in providing as few opportunities for monkeying th with things it, with host hooks as I can. So yes, there will be all sorts of what, whatever invariants I feel like I can get in the spec will be in there. So, well, this, uh, and the, start, the way that we've got it now, um, it, it also means the spec text for Git Intrinsics is simple. Mm -hmm. Enumerate the table that appears in the spec, right? Yep. And like those are those are that's your starting point, and then as a host any extensions come after that. Like it's simple. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more slightly more complex because it's not just like array, uh, uh, array prototype. It's also dot map and, you know, but it's yeah. the intention is that the sorting order should be deterministic and reliable. And like, it should match the way I, I like if I, if I dynamically use it to compute a, an object map, the, the, it should be basically identical to the object map I already have handwritten. Right. Like, but but also that yeah. the um that that there's there's not two host hooks for instance like there's not two yeah. injection points it's like not just the everybody one. does this and then everybody does something similar to that for the stuff that they added. Yep. Yeah, and then and variants. I think I mean I can double check, but I think I already have. Yeah, um, I think so too. Restrictions on the host hook that it like has to be in the same order every time. It has to be you know sorted in this way, and and you know. Anything I can think of that would vary across hosts, I want to lock down. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, for us, I think I think we know what we want. It looks like it's already there. We would be able to evaluate uh, variations based on that, and um, cool. and and the current state is probably good. Awesome. And I, I just merged during this meeting the. Uh, PR to move it to the reflect object, which matches what we talked about last time it was talked about at plenary. So mm, okay. feel free to take a look, but um, I, it just moves the, the globally exposed parts, right? The AOs are the same. All right, Jordan, thank you for joining us. We're about to pop to our next meeting um, yeah. and really appreciated the conversation. Yeah, Thanks very much so. Thank That's you. That's great. Thanks.